Hello, hello, hello. Oh, I'm on. Yeah, I am on. Yes, we are. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Good morning, team. Hey, nice to see you back there. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the first service of 2023. Yeah, how about that? I feel quite honored to be up here with you all to be able to do part of this. It was, it was, it was, yeah, how about that? All right, that's right. Hi, Fred. <laughs> Good morning, Facebook family and social media families, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, whoever else is out there Snapchatting. All of those things, whatever social media we got, got Pastor Angel, good morning. That's right. Hey, you didn't get the memo? No, I know. Well, if you're a minister and you are, should be wearing a tie. Is that right? Yeah, that's how I got it. Right, men? Look around. Your men got it. All right, we're getting it right. We're getting it right. We're trying to get it right. We're going to start off with some announcements. <clears throat> so, oh, let's see. You can sit down. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Pastor Eric. Nice job. <laughs> okay, some announcements. Guess what Thursday is? That's right. It's the first one of 2023, first one of the year. That's right. You don't want to miss it. This Saturday coming up is the men's breakfast. Yeah, men of a higher standard. There's a special speaker I hear, and he's already here, and he's looking forward to tuning up us men again as Pastor Angel will be speaking this Saturday, first one of the year. He's ministering today. He's ministering Saturday. Thursday might be a surprise to me anyway, so I'm not sure who that is, but it doesn't matter because when you come here, you're going to get what God's got for you, but you have to come. You can't sit at home now if you're working like I will be or some others. I mean, that is what it is. But them ones that are sitting home, I heard that. Where's it at back there? The ones that are sitting back just being lazy, shame on you. You're going to miss out. Don't forsake the assembly of others, as I forget. It was Pastor Eric said that last night. Okay, we'll pass the men's breakfast, and that will bring us to Sunday, which will be potluck, following Sunday, this Sunday coming up. (laughs) Breakfast. Yep, it is going to be breakfast. Invite a friend or two or three. Make sure you have food for them if you're bringing them. And uh, sign up with uh, Sister Arlena, wherever she might be. There you are, over there. Hey, you move seats. See, she's usually over there. So that's why I look at over there. No, she's always over here. No, okay, it's me. I'm always in the front. I don't look back. I don't look back. That's part of my word coming up here this week. Don't look back. Oh, my word today. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> After potluck on Sunday, we'll have Bible study on Thursday. And then on the 14th, we have the women's ministry coming up. Let's hear it for Women of Virtue, Uh, guest speaker. I know she's right here, huh? Yeah, that's a guest speaker. Sister Sally is going to be ministering the word to you women. So come ready. First one of the year again. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Jeremiah 29, 11. I meant to give it to uh, Brother Jesus, but I did not. So I want to encourage you guys about something yesterday. Brother Fred got a word, and he shared it, and God expounded on that with me this morning or last night during the night. Thank you, Fred. And his vision, I'll call what God gave Fred, because I know that was God-inspired, is he looked through this big windshield in front of him, and then he had this little mirror that looked in the rear view. Little mirror in the rear view. So what I want to encourage you guys not to do is get caught up in that rear view mirror. So when you're looking at your past, you're like looking here and you're still making headway and you're going to crash. 
it's good to go back and reflect. So what you do is you pull the car over, you get your bride out if you're married, and you hold on to her, and you look back, and you look at all the good things that God has done for you in the past, and all the times that he came through for us. And you go, you remember them, honey? Yeah, I remember them. Let's get back in the car and go forward. For, for the prophet Jeremiah says, this is from the word of the Lord. For I know the thoughts, I, I, this one I remember. For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Let's look forward to what's going on. We're not looking to rear view mirror getting caught up, but we're going to stop, reflect if we need to, we're going to get back in the car, and we're going to move on so we don't wreck along the way. So let's all stand to your feet right now and say, Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you have given us that time to reflect, that we safely look back and we can go, yes, for all those times you came through. For us elders, there's a long trail back there of what we've seen you accomplish in our lives, Heavenly Father, which gives us the confidence to go forward. Lord, I pray for the younger ones as they're in these battles, Lord. Give them, give them that future, Lord God. Let them look forward to what you're going to do in their lives, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for it, Lord Jesus. We thank you for 2023, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you give us 60 seconds in every minute, Lord God, 60 minutes in every hour, Lord God, so that at any given time we can stop, turn around, and get right with you, Heavenly Father. We look forward to going this way with you, Lord Jesus, so we ask you to enter into this place, Lord God. You're already here. We stepped into your house, Lord God. Now, I encourage you folks to come up forward. Step into 2023 with jubilee, with rejoicing and singing, and allow the Spirit of God to minister to you like only he can, Heavenly Father. We thank you for it, Lord God, as the worship team opens up in praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. I say good morning, church. How many of you guys are ready to leave some things in 2022 and embrace some things in 2023? I'll say this one thing, and we'll get started because God is good as people begin to make their way down towards the altar. It's like a, a bouncing effect. Pastor Brother Fred said something last night that dipped into what Andy shared with us a second. And as we were reading that, the Spirit of God just pointed out to me because the Scripture said, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. So that means that we got to get on God's tip, amen? I said that means we got to think like him about us. Whatever it is that happened back then, it happened back then, but that doesn't mean that God was thinking the same thing about you that you were thinking about you. That doesn't line up with his word. And the thing that really pointed out was the fact that he said thoughts of peace and not of evil. And what the Spirit of God just ministered to me was not just the evil things that we may have found ourselves doing as we tripped up, but the evil things that happened to us. He's saying, I'm not thinking about that. He said, I'm thinking about the good things that you're doing and that you're going to do because we were made for good works. And so the pains, the hurts, the ways that people mistreated you last year, you let that go. You leave that in 2022. The good things, you continue the good work that he's done in you until the day that Jesus gets back. The hurts, the pains, that's, it is what it is. We serve a good God. We serve an awesome Father. We serve someone who doesn't give up on us. Someone who always comes in first. He doesn't know last place. Someone who will always love us no matter what. And someone who's put that love on the inside of us so that we can show it to people this day. Amen? I said amen. Good and your mercy endureth forever. 
Told you I could in your mercy endure it forever. Told you I could, yeah. Told you I could in your mercy endure it forever. People from every, people from every, from generation to from generation to generation. We were. Yeah. 
I said he's worthy.
better than your touch, Lord. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Nothing is better. Nothing is better.
we're, we're still praising. We're still praising. Just the Holy Spirit was impressing on me a scripture. And I believe it's for this specific time, this specific moment. Psalms 46.10. Some of us are going through some things. 2022, even now, this moment, this day, this morning, we're going through some things. And we feel and it seems like we can't break out of them and we can't get through them. And no matter what we do, it just doesn't look like it's getting better. But see, the thing is, we are trying to do it. And God says, let me do it. The word of God says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I would be exalted among the earth. This is the same God that will be exalted over every circumstance, every situation, every problem in your life. But you got to allow him to be exalted. You got to do the exalting family. So I just want to encourage you. He is the God that is exalted over everything. Amen.
help comes from the Christ, the risen one, is the only one that can fill it. So I want you to know, going forward, every time we sing that song, understand, understand, understand. It's your heart that is turning around towards him. And all we have to do is surrender <laughs> and put our hope, put our trust in the one in whom we believe. So, Father, I thank you for that revelation that it is you who is turning our hearts around. Continue, Father, to mold us and shape us into the likeness of your Son. We thank you for all that you've done and that you've kept us in 2022, Father. And we thank you and we look forward to what you will do and accomplish in our lives in 2023, Lord. And we know and understand that it all starts with turning our heart around. So we thank you. We praise you. We give you all the honor, all the glory. In Jesus' name, and the church and I said... Amen, amen, and amen. You may be seated in the presence of your Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to continue, family, in our worship. Amen. And this morning, the Lord had given me a, a scripture to share, but he changed it on me in the middle of worship. Um. So I would like to share out of 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. And this is the, this is the Apostle Paul. He's sharing with the Corinthians about uh, the churches of, in Macedonia, which is Philippi, Thessalonica. And he's sharing with them. And, he tells, and he's telling the Corinthian church, he says, For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord, Begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. See, what they were doing is they were taking up offerings to send to the Jews in Jerusalem. So Paul is telling the Corinthians, look at the, the churches in Macedonia. They're giving out of what they have, and they're giving even more. He says, I can testify. They're begging us. Please allow us to give unto these, these other believers in Jerusalem. Amen. So this morning, I encourage you. See, that's a matter of the heart right there. If you're, if you're asking, you're begging them, hey, let me give, let me give. That's your heart for the people. So this morning, family, as the word says that they gave according to their means, give according to your means. And for those of you that the Lord is tugging on your heart to give more, give more. And I want you to know something, family. You can give of your time. We're going into a new season. Turning Point Fellowship is going into a new season in Jesus' name. So you can give of your time. We, you can give of your time as well. Amen. So I just want to encourage you to give in Jesus' name. Amen. Raise your hand if you need a tithing envelope. These handsome married ushers would give you one. And if you happen to not have any cash or check, you can always text the word give. 
to the phone number 714-477-7736. One more time, you guys. Text the word GIVE to 714-477-7736. And I want to thank you to those that are online, uh, Facebook and YouTube, for, for sending in your tithes. We receive them. We want you to know that. We do receive them, and we appreciate that. Continue to bless your Father in Jesus' name. to give unto the Lord. Thank you, Father. I would like to ask Pastor Fernando and Reina to pray for this offering, please. Hallelujah. Happy New Year, guys. Please stretch your hands. I'm going to ask my wife. I know she's got some word right now to, for this offering.
before you right now, Father. I thank you, Father, for all the goodness that you've given us, Lord. Father, we just ask that you would bless this, multiply it, Father. Use it for your kingdom, Lord. Father, that you would allow these doors to stay open for the lost and the hurting, Lord. Father, that you would pay each and every bill that needs to be paid, Lord. Father, that you would bless those who gave, Father, and those who could not. Father, I ask that you would just use this and multiply it for Pastor and his family. Father, his future generations, Father, that you would not grow weary in doing your work, Father. Father, we just thank you for right now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You guys may be seated. Amen. We will release the worship team at this time. Thank you very much, you guys. We love you guys. We bless you. Thank you for leading us in the worship. Um, the youth and the children will be staying in this morning. Amen. As we, uh, I should have kept you guys standing. <laughs> Sorry, can we stand up, please, as we welcome up my pastor, my spiritual father, Pastor Angel Baruch. <laughs> go, go and have a seat. Have a seat. I love you guys. I love you guys. Go and have a seat in Jesus' name. Uh, thank you very, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, it's it's not deserving. <laughs> you guys are gonna make me cry, man. I, I just. Uh, I want to say thank you to all, all the leaders here, to every, every one of you that while I was absent for those eight weeks, I want to say thank you very much. Thank you for, for your help, your service, for every one of you. I want to say, uh, I want to say thank you for every usher. For every teacher, for every nursery worker, uh, for every hospitality person, for every greeter, because it takes a team to make the dream work, and, and it, it takes us all. It doesn't take one man. One man can't not do this by himself. It takes us all to do this, and I just want to say thank you to everyone, to all the children, to the youth, to every one of you uh, that don't have positions, you know, you are positioned in Christ. I want you to know that. Amen. And uh, I heard your prayers. I, uh, I felt your love. You know, uh, you guys don't know how close I was to going to the other side. Uh, but uh, God kept me. And uh, you guys' prayer, you know. Your, your prayers, your, you guys uh, just kept me, kept me stirred up going in, in Jesus' name when I was ready to confess, say, you know, I'm ready, babe. I'm ready, Lord. The Lord says, no, we, we, we got one more time to go, you know. So I just want to say thank you, guys, from the bottom of my heart to every one of you that, you know, lifted up my name, you know. I want to say thank you very much. Thank you for all the service that you guys did here while we, we were not here. You know, while I wasn't here, uh, I was here watching you guys on live streaming, but I just wasn't here in, in person. I wanted to be here so bad when I wanted to come about five, six weeks ago, but the Lord was slowing me down. <laughs> he gave me gout real bad. He gave me gout on my right knee and my right ankle, my, big, my right big toe, and had it for like 28 days, gout, and uh, the last week, you know, I'm thinking I'm good, I'm ready to run, and then gout hits my left ankle. Right now, I have gout on my left ankle, but uh, right now, God always, always during worship, God allows me to walk 
walk, walk whole before the Lord. I'll probably limp after I get off, but <laughs> not right now in Jesus' name. Uh, I love you guys. I, 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 love every, I love every one of you, man. Uh, when, I, when I hug you guys, when I speak to you, it's like we're family. Yeah. You know, we're, we're friends. You know, you're friends. You know me and I know you. I know you, Frankie, man. I miss you too, brother. I always ask about you and Jasmine. Don't forget about you, Jasmine. <laughs> you guys are beautiful to me. Uh, from the least to the greatest, if you want to call yourself greatest, you go ahead and call yourself greatest. If you want to call yourself first, go ahead and call yourself first. Yeah. It's, it's, it's humbling to be here. God broke my heart, but it was a good breaking. He had to break my heart, you know, because he wants to get to the center of, of every man, of every person, you know. So uh, when, you, when God breaks your heart, don't, don't get upset with him. He does it because he loves you. The Bible says that he chastises everyone that he loves. That means he will punish you. I know that we come from, you know, uh, the, uh, the grace gospel and stuff like that. It, it isn't from grace, but it's through grace that God will break our heart. And God will break us, but it's, it's for our best. We don't understand. I don't understand. I did ask why. I asked him many times why. And he didn't answer. It's not for us to understand sometimes. It's just for us to believe. Just believe him to the end. That's all you have to do. Put your confidence and your faith in God uh, It's, uh, you guys hear me speaking, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't speak very well the first two, three weeks, four months, even now, now. But as God has given me this here, uh, I love the Lord, and I'm, uh, I'm gracious to the Lord. I'm graceful to the Lord. Thankful that uh, I'm alive and I'm well. And the work is not going to be done until I see him face to face. I want you guys to know that all of us, amen. We're going to do our profession of faith. You guys stand up. We're going to do our profession of faith. We used to do this. I said we used. It's been about almost three months. I don't know if you guys do this. Do you guys still doing this or not? Hmm. Hmm. All right. It's new. Amen. Hallelujah. This is not a prayer. This is just a profession of faith. If you listen to the words, you'll know, you know. So read your, uh, read your Bible. Raise your Bibles. Raise them up high. And you men put some bass in your voice here. Say, this is my Bible. I am what it says that I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the word of God. I boldly, I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My, is alert. My, heart is My heart is receptive. I'll never be the same. I'll never be the same. I'm, about I'm about to receive the incorruptible, the, incorruptible. the, indestructible. the indestructible, ever living seed, ever living seed. Of, the of the word of God. I'll never be the same. Be the same. I don't want to be the same. Be the same. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, Bible thumpers. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our Father. The Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is in the midst of his people. So I want you to know that the presence of God is here. I pray that your ears will be open to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I, hear that you would, I pray that you would open up your heart and receive the word of God. If it's healing, if it's correcting let it be so. If it's revelation, let it be so. If it's healing, let it be so. If it's miracle, let it be so in Jesus' name. You just got to ask. You got to ask and you receive. That's what the Bible says. 
you'll receive it. Amen? Amen. If you would open up your Bibles uh, to 43, Isaiah 43. I want to read 1 through 21, but I know we're on time. Are you guys timing me? Oh, they're not timing me, praise. They're not timing me, Pastor. Isaiah 43, 1 through 21. The Bible is talking about uh, the, redeem, the uh, redeeming of, of Israel. When Israel was in uh, captivity, capit- I can't say it, Cap- captivity, thank you, cap- uh, captivity. When, he was in cap- when they were in captivity, that God showed them mercy and grace. They didn't deserve it, but he gave it to them. And he began to announce the word over them and tell them. And when you hear this word, you guys are going to say, wow, God does this for this purse, for these people. He does it for you too. God removed people from their lives. God used other people to move for his people. The Egyptians were no more because God says, they got to be no more because of my people. So he removed those people. And God will remove people from your life, and you, you can't go back and try to get them. Leave it alone. Because that's what we struggle as Christians, as believers, that we ask God to remove things from our lives, and you don't even know it's your cousin, you don't even know it's your your, your mother-in-law, your father-in-law for a season. that They're, they're moving out of there, and, and then you see them, and you start wanting to have Bible study with him. And God said, I removed them for you. Not in death, but he removed you for a season, for a time. That you could have time to, what's the word that he gave me? It was a, a, a word that where he ministers to yourself. It's un, undivided. Your undivided attention God wants. And that's why people are removed. Because God needs your attention. He wants your attention. He doesn't want everyone else's attention. He wants your attention. And that's for everyone us. Every one of us. That we got to learn how to have, make time for God. If it starts off with one minute, that's great. Because God's going to make five minutes out of it. God will make 15 minutes out of it. He'll make 30 minutes. He'll make an hour out of it. Before you know it, you're like, oh, my God, I'm late to work. That happens to me all the time at church. Oh, I'm late to church, you know, because I have a certain time to be here. So at 9.15, if I'm past 9.15, I'm late, you know, because you give your time to the Lord. And it's not a waste of time. Just because your, your prayers didn't get answered don't mean it was a waste of time. God has a perfect time for everything in our lives. Amen? A perfect time, and we just have to learn to wait. So I'm going to read it, if I may, 1 through 21 to you guys, so you guys can know what's going on, that uh, they're they're, they're returning from Babylon, and here it is. But now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. Bring my sons from afar. That's what he's telling us. Come from afar, from the north, the west, and the east. Come for, come on, come forward. Amen. Amen. My daughters from the ends of the earth, everyone who is called by my name, Christians, Christ likes, he's calling you, amen, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. You've been made in the image and the likeness of God. You're an example of God. God in the flesh, Jesus Christ. We touched him, beheld the glory of him. Amen. It says, bring out, in verse 8, bring out the blind people who have, uh, who have eyes and the deaf who have ears. 
Let all nations be gathered together. Let the people be assembled. Who among them can declare this and show us former things? Let them bring out the witnesses that they may be justified. And let them hear and say, it is the truth. Amen. That's what, the, that's what amen means. That's the truth. I agree with that. When you say amen, that means you're agreeing with the word of God. Even if you're not living it. Even if it ain't happening in your life, it's still an amen because it's the truth. I learned that in my life. You got to learn to say amen when you're hurting. When you're not healed in your body, in your mind. You, it's still amen because God said it. Can I get an amen? That's right. He says, my servants, verse 10, I'll start from 10. You are my witnesses, says the Lord. And my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand, I am he. Before there was no God, before no God formed, no shall there be after me. There's no God, only God. Exactly, he's the sovereign God. He's the only God, the only wise God, the only invisible God is him. His name is Jesus. There's no other God. Don't ever bow down before no one else. Verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. I have declared and saved, I have proclaimed, and there is no foreign God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, says the Lord, that I am God. Indeed, before the day was... I am he. There is no one who can deliver out of my hand. I work and who will reserve it. What God does will not come back void. It has a purpose and you have a purpose. And it's purpose that you would have a purpose in Christ. That you would live in purpose. Amen. We have purpose now. We were lost. We were blind, but now we can see. Purpose, you have purpose in your life now. Verse 14. Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake I will send to Babylon and bring them all down as figuratives. Thank you, figuratives, thank you. The Chaldeans who rejoice in their ships I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who brings forth the chariots and the, whole, and the horse, armies and power. They shall lie, lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinguished. They are quenched like a wick. When they went into the Red Sea, there were no more. He got done with them. And people have asked me, is it, if you serve a God that is so loving and so kind, why does he allow someone to die? Or why would, you allow, why would he allow someone to be killed? I said, because they were never going to serve my God. They were never going to bow before my God. They were going to walk in being proud haughty in their own selves. And that'll kill you. Pride will kill you. It'll separate you from God. That's why we as Christians must be humble people. Don't try to be first. Try to be last. Because when you're last, you'll be first in his eyes. But if you want to be first, you say, go ahead. Have at it. It's yours. God loves the humble, and he hates the pride, the prideful. That's God's word. That's not my word. That's God's word. Amen? And these are the verses I want to get to, verse 18 through 21. This is for us, 2023. We're in a whole new world, a whole new realm, God's word. God's word. We're in God's kingdom right now. 
we're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're not to act like the world. We're not to behave like the world. We're not to speak like the world. We're not to dress like the world. We are not of the world. We're the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen? amen. Our thoughts, our minds, our attitude has to be toward God. Amen. amen. If someone takes advantage of you, amen. Amen. Things are said to you, don't even try to defend yourself, man. Just walk away. You know that God has victory. He'll give you victory in Jesus' name. It says, do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Shall, I not spring, shall it not spring forth? Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The beasts of the field will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, because I gave waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. To give to my people, my chosen, chosen people of God. This people I have formed for myself, and they shall declare my praise. God made you just for himself. That's why he's a jealous God. And when we flirt with the world, when we go out with the world and do our things with the world, God doesn't like that. He hates it. He wants you to be loved by him, not to be pushed away by him. Don't be pushed away from God. Let him hug on you. Let him love on you. Some of you need to ask God, teach me how to love me, because some of you don't know how to love. Some of you weren't taught how to love. But God can teach you, and he will. He'll hug you. You learn to kiss men on the cheek, and that don't mean that you know you're uh, <laughs> you're the other side, you know. <laughs> you know that you're, you know. And I'm gonna say it, you're not gay, yeah, you because know, you're gay. You know, gay in the correct manner is we're happy. Yeah. They, you know, they they uh, per, they uh, uh, they messed it up. That's the word I can think of right now. And we, we got to learn how to love even them. We, we love them. I, I, I do. I love them. I have family that's gay, but I, I'm going to love them. I'm not going to talk about them or nothing like that. I'm going to love on them. I'm going to tell about Jesus to them that we could win them over for Christ. Amen? They're, they're not our enemies. The enemy is Satan. Amen? But we do got to talk about it. But you got to learn how to talk about it. Amen? If you would turn to 2 uh, Corinthians 5, uh, 17, we're talking about new beginnings with what the Lord started here with Israel, that he's given them a cap, he's given them a, a pass, he's given them a way out of their sin and out of their d- dilemma, he's out of, out of their dilemma. When you're in a dilemma, there's nothing you can do about it, there's nothing you can do about it. You're in a dilemma. Only God can deliver you from that. When, when the children of Israel came to the, to the ocean, to the Red Sea, they were in a dilemma. This is the Red Sea, and Moses is standing here, and three million people are coming his way, and he's like, oh, my God. He then came to the, to the sea, and the, char- the chariots and the Egyptians are coming after us. They're going to kill us. And you hear the haters and you hear the people who mourned and not mourned, the people who uh, murmured, thank you. Ooh, you're good, my brother. Uh, Murmured, you know, they murmured. And God said, tells Moses, don't worry about it. You raise that that rod, you raise your hand, and you're not going to see these Egyptians any longer. And God will do that for you. He will will split the Red Sea for you. Because he loves you that much. He'll do anything you would like him to do according to his will. Not our will or our desires. 
But when we worship God, when we truly worship God, I'm not talking about with music and all that. That's beautiful. We do that, worship and praise. But a worship from the heart. When you can wake up every morning and just say, thank you, Father. I love you, Jesus. I worship you and I bless you above all things and above everyone. I love you, Lord. And you begin to worship him. And some of you get new songs in your heart. All of a sudden, you don't even know what you're, why you're singing this song, but it's in your heart because the Lord has dropped this new song in your heart. It's a song you've sang before, but now it's new in you to refresh you, to give you a new beginning in this day. Amen? So the Bible says, therefore, after everything has been spoken to this moment, he says, therefore, if anyone, you are the anyone's. If anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature. A creature, a new creature means someone novel, novel, some o a o n o v e l, novel, means something new, something that's never been before. Something that's never been before. That's who we are in Christ. We're Christians. We've never been before, and now we are. We're in Christ, amen? We're a new creature, a new creation. God has done something new. David, there's no other David like you. Nowhere in the whole world. He, you, they, they may have your last name, people around here, but there's no one like you. No one like you, Diego. No one like you, Celia. No one. Bert, no one like you, Sandra. No one. No one like you, Aaron. No one. God made you, when he made you, he just broke the, the mold. Thank you. And he made you new. That's why we're not to act or try to be like somebody else. We be who we are before Christ. You guys caught that Ebonics real quick right there? You guys didn't catch it, huh? I caught it. I said, oh, my God. But it says, therefore, if, any, uh, uh, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation, Old things have passed away. Your old life is gone. It's over. Quit trying to hang out to it. Amen? I know I'm going to say something. You guys are like, oh, man, here he goes. I, 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 you know, I know a lot of you guys like oldies and all that stuff, man. You guys could hear it for an hour while you're cleaning the house, while you're driving. You know, that stuff will take you away. Can I get an Amen? Because I know if I listen to three, four oldies that people send to me, because I have a friend that she loves oldies. And she'll send me one oldie. And one, I said, that was good. And all of a sudden, another oldie comes. And one time, I got caught up in it for 40 minutes. Listening to oldies, man. I said, what am I doing, man? Man, I'm, I'm back in the garage partying. I'm back in the backyard. I'm in the house parties on Denmark, you know. You just... You're partying and everything. Like, what the heck? That's where your mind goes, your, your imagination. And you, you know everybody in the house that was there. You're like, wow, what a trip. You know? You start singing, just my imagination. You know? <laughs> you know, temptation. Running away with me. <laughs> and that'll happen to us if we allow that. Old things have passed away. The word behold, what does it mean? One more time. What does it mean? Check it out. That's what behold means. Check it out. All things have become new now. We're new in the spirit. Physically, we're still the same. I have gray hair. I lost a lot of weight, praise the Lord. So I did change that. Amen. <laughs> uh, the outside doesn't change. When we go to the mountain, I tell the men, yeah, we're praising God. We're worshiping God. We're in the presence of God. We're experiencing the power, the grace, the love of God. Crying, falling on your face, the men and everything. Crying, hallelujah. And they're going, Father, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But when we go back down that mountain, you still have the same wife, the same kids, the same job. And it's not their fault. Cause, you know, oh, man, if she could change. No, you have to change. The men have to change. 
You want, you want to be the head, but you don't want to change. Doesn't work that way. God called you to be the head. He called her to be her helpmate, the one that stands next to you. Amen? Why did we go there? But therefore, it says, uh, we're new uh, creatures in Christ. Behold, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. It takes time. It's a process. Spiritually, you're new. God's work is done in you. Now you've got to learn how to walk it. We, live, uh, we, we, live, we walk by faith and not by sight. Not by our emotions, not by what we hear, by what we taste. Not what we feel, but we live by faith. Because your feelings will mess you up. Give me your amen right there, man. Come on, amen, right? Because we're emotional people and we, we blow, we mess it up, you know? And we got to learn to keep, take control of our message, of our minds and our emotions. Because what seems impossible to you is not impossible for God. You just have to believe that. That God could change your emotions. You're an emotional man and woman, but God can teach you how to control that. That anger, that, that rage, that bitterness, that unforgiveness. A little boy came up to the mic yesterday while we were having our, our worship and our praise that Yesterday, he grabs the mic and he says, I prayed that God would take these things, these thoughts about me, the way I think. I prayed that he would take that from me, from my mind. And he says, and he did. The faith of a child. When you ask from your heart, he'll give it to you. He gave it to the little boy. How old is that little boy? About eight years old? About eight years old. And he used his faith because his mind was taken off, he said. And now God has brought him peace. There's things that God wants for us to get rid of, but we just won't let it go. We won't confess it from our hearts. The emotions, the bitterness, the anger, the always going back to the back, to back to life. Always doing that, thinking about it, talking about it. You bring it right back to life. When you begin to talk about it, it just, it gets so life, it gets so live and so vivid in your mind that you can live it all again. Begin to cry over oldies and begin to cry over stories and things like that. We've got to learn to look forward and no longer back. It's 23. Today's the beginning of the, the rest of the year and the beginning of the rest of your life. Today your life starts brand new. Forget about what you did last night, last month, amen. Today your life starts brand new. As you surrender to God and say, Father, forgive me for that. And start moving out of your past and start walking into your future. We have to do that. It takes time and you're going to fall and you're going to trip and you're going to fall on your knees and you're going to fall on your face and all that. You're going to say some things you shouldn't say. But God is going to teach you how to correct that. The failures, in our, the failures in our lives are, are not f uh, final. They're just step stones that we can walk on and go on and learn. And we keep going. We go higher and higher and we forget about the fail failures and we believe and we stand in front of the, the victory of God that he's given us. Every one of you that are standing here today, sitting here today, God has given you a whole new opportunity. He's prepped you for this day. Everything that you've gone through your whole life, Frankie, since you've been this high to where you are right now, God made it, allowed it all to happen. But he saved you through it all. 
Isn't that beautiful? And when you wanted to fail, God wouldn't let you fail. When you wanted to quit, God wouldn't allow you to quit. Amen. You, you quit for an hour, you quit for a day. I'm not going to church, you know. And then you go not to church for a, a week or two, you know. No, no, I'm just going to, you know, go to church and read my own Bible. Tell me how that works out. Tell me about that fellowship. I've known a lot of people like that. They fellowship real good for about a month or two, and then after that, they come right to their old man, grouchy, grouchy, boochy faces. Amen? I didn't even write my, I didn't even bring all my notes from, I took a picture of them, but I'm good, I'm good. Amen? <laughs> What God has done for us through his spirit and through his word is he built us up for 2023. God has set you up for 2023. Amen. You're not here. You're not here by coincidence. God has called your name. Like, how did I end up in this church? God calling you. Amen. Amen. It's a process, a process that he takes every one of us through, through the highs and through the lows, through a lot of food and through sometimes no food. I remember eating bologna sandwiches and Kool-Aid, you know. Bert was there, he remembers my refrigerator. Peanut butter and jelly and a piece of bread, a loaf of bread in there, baby. Want dinner? Peanut butter and jelly. Want some lunch? Peanut butter and jelly. Want some dinner? Peanut butter and jelly right there, baby. Want some Kool-Aid? Make some Kool-Aid. That's what we ate. That's what I ate, you know, amen? But God told me that I'm here to encourage you guys to build you up through his word. Don't allow the, fa the failures and the mistakes of your life to engulf you. Don't allow them to stop you from progress from going forward you're going to have them you're going to have challenges you wanted a woman you want a challenge you wanted a man you want you got challenge and that's why some of you brothers don't want to get married like, oh. some of you ladies don't want to get married because you just don't want that challenge no more but if you get that right man you're going to work together. It's going to be good. It's going to be a good team after you've gone through some things. Amen? It takes time. It takes time. The Lord has blessed our lives. God has given you a gift of life. I'm talking about the gift that is the second life, eternal life. I'm not talking about this life here. This life is going to end. If we get 80 years, if we get 100 years, 120 years, it's going to end. It's not going to be forever. But there's an eternal life that you must think about that a lot of people don't think about, especially in the church nowadays. We no longer think about eternal life. We think about just right now, the moment, what I can have, what I can get, who I can become, what, what, what house I can have, what car I can have, you know, uh, how I can lose weight and how I can, you know, do this, do that. What about our eternal life? God has given you eternal life gift, a gift of life. Because all of us are going to go before that judgment seat. And he wants to give you eternal life through Jesus Christ. It's yours if you just repent and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You could have eternal life. You can live forever. I'm going to die. One day, Angel Brooch is going to die. My body, these bones are all going to turn dust one day. I don't know how long it takes for that to happen, you know. But I know that I have eternal life coming. I'm not bragging or boasting in myself. I'm bragging and boasting in my God. That it's promised that. Amen. In Jesus' name. 
He's given us a gift, a life of gift, gift to, uh, to experience here on earth. The joy, the gladness, the health, our faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Just for the reading part. It says, we live by faith and not by sight. That's how we should live. Zechariah, Ze, uh, Ze, how do you say Zechariah? Ze, Zechariah, thank you. Zechariah 4, 6. Not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit. And this is how we live. Some of you guys think because you have big chest and a big broad, broad uh, arms and big arms. I don't have big arms no more. You have big arms and all that stuff. That that makes you a man. What makes us a man is take care of your people, Amen. your family. Amen. Work. If, you, if, if you're healthy to work, work. Amen. Don't make excuses not to work. Have a reason to work. Us as people. Have a reason why to live. Don't make an excuse not to live. Those eight weeks of being in that house. I was in a house for, because I had gout for like six weeks. And then, you know, they didn't want me to go outside because another surgery was coming. And don't, you know. Don't go outside because you're going to get COVID. You're going to get flu. And, oh, my God, you know, it's going to uh, 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 make it go longer and longer. You know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Can I go outside in the backyard, man? So I would just go in the front yard and sit on the bench. I'd go in the backyard and a bunch in the bench and go pet my dogs and stuff. I don't even like my dogs. And I'm over there petting them and stuff. <laughs> they be, I got two big dogs, mean dogs. And I'm out there, you know, petting them. And they're all loving it. You're like, man. This guy done changed. <laughs> hey, Jesus done changed his life. <laughs> but it's not by might nor by power, but it's by his spirit that lives within you that gives you life, gives you change. We got to quit fighting the flesh and live in the spirit. Amen. And let God do it. Let God change your mind, your heart. It's not hard to, to smile. It's not. Can you smile for me, baby, right there? There you go. <laughs> See, yes, I'm looking at you. <laughs> that we would smile. It takes a lot of work to be a, a poochy face. It takes a lot of work, you know, a lot of work to, to have a frown. Just practice. When you're in the mirror at home, practice and smile. Yeah, there you go, Frankie, looking good, right on, you know? You know, come on, Matthew, just smile. There you go, amen. It, 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 it's so easy to smile at each other. We have to change our character, amen? God has given us the, the life of joy. We got to stop complaining so much. Stop murmuring so much. We have to learn how to praise God. Don't complain about your job. Praise God you have a job. Don't complain about the, the gas prices, man. Thank God you can put gas in your car. Amen. Don't, thank, don't, don't complain about, you know, oh, the garden I saw this $12 a pound. You know, this, if you can afford it, buy it, you know. Amen. I, that's what I... I, I I said that to a lot of men that were here in the kitchen with me about a, two weeks ago. I said, do you still live the same way, Joe? And you said, yes. Bert, do you still live the same way? Has anything changed? No. You, Andy, has anything changed in your household? No. Has anything changed in your household for these last two years? You still eat every day, right? We got we to gotta know that God supplies every one of our needs according to the riches and glory in Christ. Amen. You're, you're, you're not lacking in any good thing, you know. All that stuff is going up, but you're still putting gas in. You may not be driving around like you used to, you know. You ain't listening to your oldies and cruising around no more, you know. Now you stay at home and watch them. You know, listen to it, amen. <laughs> but we still eat, right? Right? 
I know that a lot of you right here, probably about 50% of you are going to go eat at a restaurant afterwards. Give me an amen. Ain't no amens now, huh? All of a sudden. No, it is. It's true, right? We're going to go eat somewhere, right? Even if it's a fast food, you know? Going to go get a burger, go get some tacos, you know? It's going to be quick. Boom, when you get home, you finish it all up, you know? God has given you everything that you need in your life. Nothing's changed, but you have changed. Politicians are still politicians. Judges are still judges. Amen? Isn't it, isn't it funny that us who used to get in trouble and go to jail and go to prison and all that stuff, that you ain't doing that no more? <laughs> Please say pull over. Like, yes, sir, pull over. How you doing, sir? You know, you already know the, the you know, what to do, bro. You, you got your license out. You got your registration out. You got your insurance out. There you go. No, no trouble, no trouble. You know, amen. We've learned. We've learned to follow the, you know, the law. Amen. And the same thing with us as uh, believe, believers, born again believers. We've learned to follow God. To the instructions of God. Some followed better, but you're getting better. That's why we're smiling now. Amen. We smile because God has given us a reason to smile now. We're not mad. I, I ain't mad if I eat some rice and beans with some uh, uh, wevels, you know. Exactly. Come with it. Amen. Get some uh, tortillas and mix it with eggs and stuff like that. It's my favorite right there, baby. You know, I know you guys say, oh, that's man, you know, a, 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 a poor man's food. But it's good, really. I, when I thought I was something, you know, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, my wife took us to go eat at a restaurant, right? And uh, Would you like some tortilla soup? She tells me, I'm like, you crazy? I ain't eating no tortilla soup. That's for poor people, man, you know. I'm making money now, you know. Clam chowder for me. <laughs> Thinking you're something, you know. Sit there, start eating that tor tortilla soup like, it's good. <laughs> we used to get that one, huh, right? We had no more food. That's what you got, man. Tortilla soup. Ain't no chicken in it. I don't know why they called it chicken soup. Chicken tortilla soup. I don't know why. It give you a taste of chicken, but. But many of us complain instead of praise. We complain, we complain about our jobs, our marriages, our brothers, our friends. Instead of lifting one another up, instead of cheering one another up, some of us still put people down and talk about people and gossip about people. God hears your gossip. Every word that comes out of our mouth is weighed. Every word. I don't care if you do it in secret. I don't care if you do it on the phone and you're in a, in a, in a closet. You know, no one can hear me right here. God is right there. God is wherever you're at. Amen? So we have to learn to take, her, uh, take heart in the word of God. We have to learn to move forward. Because if we continue to do what we used to do, we're going to be we're going to be lost for it. We're going to be sad for it. We're going to pay a price for it. When this was all happening to me and they're giving me, they weren't giving me good no, uh, news. Don't think they were giving me good news. I don't think doctors know how to give good news, man. <laughs> they give you bad news, you know. But you got to turn that around. What the devil meant for evil, God means for good. And you use the word of God. And you begin to stir yourself up and you begin to change your life and you change your attitude and you change your, your thinking and your thoughts by the power of God. Got to open up that scripture. I'm hurt. You got to look up that word hurt, what it means in the scriptures that say hurt. I need comfort. The reason that a lot of us are starving as Christians, as spiritual people, We don't, eat the, we don't eat the word. We don't partake. 
if, you know, don't, don't raise your hands or nothing like that, but I would say probably 70% of you don't, eat your, don't drink your word and eat on your word. I'm not talking about your devotion. That's a little scripture and gives you a little, you know, uh, compliment, uh, gives you a little word underneath. I'm talking about you getting in the word. You begin to take a note and write down what the Lord is saying, how he's saying it to you. It's up to you. Because if, if it was up to me, I wouldn't want to buy you guys nothing to eat. You know, I, I go buy you guys something when we go eat together. And I'll pay for it and all that stuff. But sometimes our kids, we don't want to feed our kids. You know, we feed them anyway, right? <laughs> when I'm upset with, yeah, I'm upset with my son sometimes. Like, man, I ain't going to buy him nothing. <laughs> I feel like just buying something and walk right in the house and just eat in front of them, you know? Those thoughts go through my mind, but then you're like, man, thank God for a soft heart. Amen? Amen. All right, we're gonna eat, but we're going to eat what I want to eat, chicken. <laughs> he says, again, it's for free, my brother. <laughs> a 20-piece, baby. <laughs> I'll get 10, and you and your mom can go ahead and split the other ones. <laughs> Amen. We have to remember that who God is, that he's the faithful one. That his word is the good news, the gospel, amen? You got to remember that you've been delivered from the past of the enemy. You got to remember to be steadfast. A lot of you quit right away, you quit. And the first thing you want to throw is a D word. First thing, once you get in trouble, once you get argue, in arguments, the first thing is divorce because it's so easy. I'm going to talk to men right here because men like to run. They'll run from their family. They'll run from their wives. They'll run and quit their job, right? It gets hard. I quit this job. And your wife goes on like, what do you mean you quit? You were making like you know, two, three thousand dollars a month. And now what are we gonna do? I quit. He's a jerk. And she's like, You're the jerk. Probably in her head, she can't tell you that, you know? Because you just lost us a lot of money. We gotta learn how to last. Resilient. We gotta be resilient. You gotta learn how to fall down and get up. You gotta learn how to be flexible and stretchable. In the, new, in the uh, new year of stepping in, learn this. Don't quit. Don't teach your kids to quit. Because if they see you quit, guess what they're going to do? They're going to quit. They're going to be quitters. My dad did that. It was easy for him to walk away from that job and that job. and that. He had five jobs in one year. Oh, my God. We got to learn how to keep our jobs. Amen? I can see if you're going to go to another job and you're going to get it. A lot of more money, not 50 cents or a dollar more, you know. It's not even worth it. You're going to drive another 20 miles out for a dollar an hour. Very good. You're going to lose money. You're not going to gain money. Amen? The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 23. Want to put that up for me here? Let us hold fast to the confessions of our hope without wavering, without being moved. That you just, Jesus is Lord no matter what goes on. He's my healer no matter what goes on. I've been battling this gout for over a month, five, five weeks. God is my healer. It hit me again just last night. It just blew up right here on my left ankle, you know. And I'm waking up this morning, honestly. I'm like, oh, man. I said, oh, my God. I said, Lord, really? I'm like, oh, my God. Then what I ate yesterday, you know, I knew it. When they put that in front of me, I said, I'm not to eat this. You know what that means? Hard, hard head, tentacles. Spirit of God's talking to you. And you know, we speak our tongues and all that stuff and do our little holy rolls, you know. 
We need to obey. Israel failed because of their disobedience. Not following instruction. A lot of Christians fell, and we want to blame God. Love your pan dulce. Love your coffee. You know it ain't good for you, but you're going to have it anyway. Get that, get that uh, prime rib. You don't eat that prime rib. Mm, I got to. I got to have it. And you'll eat it. Man, there's some brothers I stay away from because they invite me, like, want to go eat some ribs? I'm like, oh, I got to go see. I'm going to go to movies with my brother. Because <laughs> I know it's going to hurt. And that's what happened. As soon as I got up, I'm like, the spirit of God, like, this is, this is what you sold. This is what you're going to reap. And Tomas, you know, he's not very graceful to me at times. <laughs> no, but he's just telling the truth, you know, and he's like, I told you, told you not to eat that. You know, I'm like, I know, I know. But, but we learn, amen? You know? It's a new beginning, a new year, amen? And it's uh, cust 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 yeah, come on, angel. customary, customary for us to think that we're going to just do everything brand new. God is giving you a new opportunity. He's prepped you all these years. Right now, you've been prepped, Gus, to live your life now. Preparation, instruction, all this, your mom and and Ray have given you all this instruction, and your dad giving you instruction, all this since you're little, to become who you are. God's going to give you that opportunity to become that man you want to be in God, an engineer, architect, doctor, whatever you want to be. Girls, you can be whatever you want to be. You don't have to be what your mama, what your mama tells you to be. You be who you want to be. In Christ, but you got to go for it. You got to be steadfast. You got to keep going, no matter what, twins. You got to keep going. You may start in a in a small city, uh, city uh, uh, college, but you'll end up in a in a university. If you just keep going, no matter how big you are, stuff like that. You guys seen Pastor uh, uh, Vargas Pete? Five ten. He was like five ten, two hundred thirty five pounds. For us Mexicans, he was a big boy. That's a big old boy, man. You know, yeah, we're five six. You know, we look up to him like, oh man, yeah, this guy's big. He he got he got to eat good, you know. No, but he kept going and he went to university from high school. He did what he did. So I just want to encourage you guys: don't give up. Be steadfast. Amen. Remember, there is no one or nothing that can separate us from the love of God. Romans 8, 38, 39. Because some of you need to be loved on. Some of you need to know what it is to love. If your parents ain't hugging you, you hug your parents. If your parents ain't, ain't, ain't gentle or, or, or sweet, hug them anyway. Yesterday, I'm, I'm with sisters, you know, they're talking with them and everything, having fun, laughing. And, uh, you know, trying to offer them some sweets, some cake and pie and all that stuff. Oh, no, I don't like sweets. I'm, I'm, I don't eat sweets. All right, you know. And that's how it is sometimes with our kids and our lives. God is offering you sweets. He's offering you love. It's, it's funny because we as men and women... We don't know how to love and we don't know how to share love with people. And it's hard. Because you, you chose this person because you loved them. But when's the last time you just grabbed their hand and, and held them? When's the time you just walked down the hallway and held her hand or held his hand? When's the last time you gave her a kiss without getting her hip, uh, a headache? Uh, what is that called? Headlock. You know how the Vatas do it. They do headlocks, you know. And girls like this, like. 
I love you. I, I, I know, but my neck doesn't love you, you know. <laughs> we do that stuff, you know. Uh, we have to learn. He says, for I am persuaded. This is Paul speaking to the Roman church. He says, I'm persuaded. I mean, he goes, I know that I know. I'm not guessing. I'm not believing. I know. I'm persuaded. That neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come. Nor health, uh, height, thank you, height, death, or any other created things shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. There's nothing that can separate you from God. Even when he judges you, he judges you in love. And he's a just God. He's not going to cheat for you. He's not going to lie for you. You think you got away with something like, oh, God, thank you. No, God, like, I didn't do nothing. You did that, and you asked, you allowed the enemy to do that for you. He didn't allow me to do what I have to do. Because he's going to make us go through things for us to become the men and women, we need to be. Right now, you know, the youth are here. And they're like, oh, pastor, why did he come back? Oh, my God. Here he goes again. Yeah. God is dropping things in you. If you're paying attention or you're not paying attention, God is dropping in you. When the kids fall asleep, it doesn't matter. When they fall asleep, it doesn't. Because I believe that the spirit of man is alive and he's well, amen? And he's speaking to them. All of a sudden they change, like, what the heck? You were asleep, you weren't even listening. But God did something in their life. That's why I don't get upset when the kids fall asleep. Let them fall asleep. Even if they fall asleep on the, on the benches or they fall asleep underneath the benches, you know, don't get all upset. I don't let them. Let them be in Jesus' name. That's my teaching there at mine. That's my teaching. Because <laughs> some parents won't. You stay up. Get up. Get up. You know, right? Yeah, Andy was like that too. <laughs> so there's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. And I really want you guys to learn that in, as a church. God loves you. Who you are right now. He knows exactly who you are. You can put a front in front of me and I can put a front in front of you. But it's who God knows who you are. Your thoughts. Your foolish thoughts. Your bitter heart. Your envy. Your jealous. He knows all that. The the pride. He knows all that. Your greed. He knows that. But yet he still loves you. And he wants to change you. There's a saying that I learned 28, 29 years ago when I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. For you guys who were ever appended, uh, depended on things outside of the natural. I remember the first week that I was sober. It was, it was mind-blowing. Seven days. I hit a month. I'm like, oh, my God. There is a God. I'm sober. All of a sudden, I hit six months. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm telling everybody in the church, you know, like if they want to know. I didn't care. Hey, man, you know what? I've been sober for six months. Praise God. Glory. And they're like, oh, okay. Good for you, brother. You know, I say, yeah, man, God is good. God is great. When I hit a year, brother, I was like, oh, come on. Praise the Lord. I was dancing and everything. They threw a barbecue and everything for me. I'm like, yes. What God does for our lives. And he knew what I was and he knew and he knows today who I am. There's no nothing to hide. God loves you anyway. I want you to know that. And we don't take advantage of that love. Now, you wouldn't want your duties, your, your babies to take advantage of your kindness, right, Joanne? You know? You tell them to take out the trash and they 
kick rocks, old lady. And then they go in there and say, Mom, cook me some breakfast. Kick rocks. Take out the trash. <laughs> Amen? And that's, and that's how we are with God sometimes. We talk back to God and we do what we want to do as, a, as adults. We want it our way. And then we want God to, like, uh, perform for us. Like he owes it to us. Because all I got to do is just call. All I got to do is declare the word of God. It's going to happen right now. Watch. In Jesus' name. And we get our spiritual voice on and all that stuff. It don't work like that. God says, let it be done according to your faith. They were hungry for God. They were hungry for the things that God was doing. They wanted it. Same thing for us. We got to know what God wants for us. Amen. What he needs. I'm done right here a little bit. This last one right here. We got to learn that God takes dependence. God, uh, uh, that God takes us to places of dependence. And in our de uh, uh, dependency of God, he creates for us as his people new beginnings and new blessings to start with a fresh start. As you depend on him, lean not on your own understanding, but with all your heart, trust in the Lord, and he directs your steps. It's not your steps. to do. He's directing you. He's telling you what to do. 28 years of serving the Lord and honoring the Lord, you know, this is where he's brought me thus far. Yeah, he gave me vision. I can't say, oh, it's my vision. It wasn't. It's God's vision. It was God's plan. It's God's dream. It wasn't mine. <laughs> I don't have those kind of <laughs> brains up here, you know. It's him. You guys, some of you guys are way more intelligent than pastor. But God dropped that in me, this man. And he said, this is what we're going to do, angel. And this is how it's going to be done. And I said, yes, Lord, yes. Sometimes I said no with my attitude and no, not with my words, but uh, with my mouth. But I said no in my actions, right? When he says come to church and no, you know, we don't say no to him. Like, oh, no, Cowboys are playing. Yeah, I'm going to go to a Cowboy game instead, you know. I'm going to go to my friend's house instead. I'm going to go barbecue first. You know, we don't say no to God. Our actions say no to God. And that's why we have to check ourselves. They have a saying in the world, right? Check yourself before you wreck yourself. You guys know that song? Holy, 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 holy. <laughs> Hey Amen. Come on back. There you go. Thank you. So this is the beginning of a new day, a new life, a new way. We're not to look back, guys. The only reason we look back, Andy had gave a good LSD, uh, illustration. Is if we were to drive, imagine it, Rana, right here, the one with the beige blouse. Imagine the redhead. Imagine if you drove your car and you look in the mirror all the way. He said you're going to wreck, right? You will. But that's why the mirror is, I mean, the windshield is bigger than the mirror. For you can see what's coming and where he's leading you and where you're going. And that's what he's doing with us. He's opening our minds and our hearts in 2023. That we can see clear if you would allow him and ask him, Father, let me see clearly. Show me, instruct me in the way that I should go. Instruct me. I need instruction. I need to know where, my, where is my family going? Where are you taking your family? Some of you guys don't even have goals. You guys are just, que sera, sera. Where's your goal? Where are you going? Are you going to get a house in three years? Our, our, you know, our goal is to get a house. And not just a house, but you know what? I'm going to help other people on the way too. I've emptied it, you know, I've moved from apartments when I was a, a single man, you know, I, I give the, the furniture away. 
My son Angel was good at that, you know, just like, Dad, they said they could have the, could they have the refrigerator? I said, yeah, I thought we were going to get it, you know. Can they have the stove too? I said, oh, yeah, 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 take the stove too. Because, you know, I was moving. I was going to get married and, you know, I was going to live, live with, you know, with my wife. So you start giving things away. And that's what we got to do here. We got to give away some stuff. There's some stuff you got to let go. Clear out that garage. Clear out that extra bedroom you have there. You rather have you rather have boxes in there and a bunch of junk there instead of some live, some uh, 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 human living there. You know. You got to get, you know, right? Make room for people. Amen. I'm not saying they got to live with you for the next six months. You know, want to stay the weekend? Cool. Well, you know, you're not going to stay here forever, but you're here. Amen? Amen. We're here to help people. Right. We're here to be a blessing. Yes, sir. Amen. And as you enter 2020, uh, 2023, know that, that you've been blessed to be a blessing. Amen. God has given you life yes. and life more abundantly. An overflow of abundance. You got more than enough. More than enough. You're rich. You don't even know it. That's why you're, uh, that's why you got all kinds of stuff. Boxes. Mine, 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 mine. We got to get rid of some stuff. We make, we're like the rich man. No, no, we're just going to make another barn. Put more stuff in there. Instead of giving it away. So as you enter in today. Pray. You may be full of pride. You may be full of bitterness, anger, jealousy, greed. It's time to get rid of it. I have two refrigerators, one in the kitchen, one in the garage. Plus a big freezer. Money, baby, your money. You got money. We got to learn to bless people. With ourselves, with our, with a smile. I'm going to see when I go in the lobby, you know. The foyer. See if you, see if you got your smile on. Even if it's a fake one, put it on, man. Because I'm going I'm to watch you. <laughs> you wear, wear a smile. Hug on each other. It's a brand new year. It's a brand new day. Amen. Start brand new in Jesus' name. Let's all stand up. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you for being part of it. Are there any first-time visitors here? Your first time ever here at Turning Point Fellowship? Back there, if you want to give them a... Amen. Over here, amen. They already been here before? I, oh, i never seen them. Praise God. I missed out on a lot here. Put this scripture up just real quick because I want to share love with you. 1334, John 1334, John 1334. Give you a minute, a minute, please. Because what God has dropped in me is more love. All I could talk about is the love of God, the mercy, the forgiveness of God for me. I'm so grateful that I, you know, yeah, I want to go to heaven just like everybody else. But I want to see other people grow up. You know, I got, I got grandbabies that are 12 years old, 13 years old. I got baby grandbabies that are 6 years old. I would like to see them grow up, get married. What kind of woman he picks? What kind of man he picks? You know? Because a lot of you said, I'm not going to pick someone like my dad. I'm never going to pick someone like my mom. Then you pick them, and they're just like your mama, <laughs> just like your daddy. Yeah. Can I get an amen? <laughs> they're going to be like that. This is the Lord speaking. A new commitment. Co con uh, yeah, yeah, condiment. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Commandment. Thank you, guys.
You guys don't know what's happening, but it's, it's happening. God is doing something. Amen? Amen. A new commitment, commandment, a new commandment I give you, I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also would love one another. He's not suggesting that. He's commanding you to do it. He's telling you to do it. That's Jesus. He's not saying, I, 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 please, would you do this? He's saying, love one another as I loved you. That's what we're called to do as Christians. We're not called to like each other, put up with one another. We're called to love one another. That's what we're called in Jesus' name. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for this love. I thank you for your people, Father, for their patience, Father, for their graciousness, Lord God. Thank you that as you open our hearts and you open our minds, Father, that you would fill us with your word and your spirit, Lord. That we would learn to love one another, to forgive one another. We would learn, Father, to befriend one another, Lord. To walk with one another. We thank you for the healing, the power, the authority of your spirit that lives within us, Lord. We thank you for the signs and the wonders that follow the gospel and the preaching of the of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Lord. I thank you for everyone that's here, Lord. I thank you for divine protection and a whole new year, Father. That as they walk throughout this year, Father, they would recognize that you are with them. They would hear you in the car. They would hear you in their homes, in the showers, in the bath, Father, in the garage, in the backyard, in the work, in the warehouse, Father, in the office, wherever they may would be, they would hear the voice of God. I pray, Father, that your perfect will be done. Nothing else, nothing less, and nothing more than your perfect will being done in our lives. As they go, Father, out, out to the highways and the byways, Lord, let them be the one that is the light, Lord. Let the stranger see and know that these are children of light. Thank you as they eat, Father, as they share, Lord, a meal that, Father, that you would just bless them with fellowship, with laughter and joy in their conversation and their uh, relationships with one another, Lord. Even at home, did it not just end here, but just continue to go throughout the whole year, Father. That marriages, that brothers and sisters, that husbands and wives, aunts and uncles, friends would be changed today. That a new beginning, Father, would start in their lives. And they would be steadfast with their faith. Not giving up, not quitting, Lord. And I'm going to make it till I, till I get there to the end, Lord God. I pray and I thank you, Father, for the blessings upon the life of Turning Point Fellowship, this church, the people, and upon myself, Lord, I'm grateful. I'm thankful for who you are. For you are my God. And you are their God, Lord. I pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for coming out. We're dismissed. Take, hug on somebody. Shake somebody's hand before you, before you leave in Jesus' name. Amen.